it'll perk faster if you stare at it? I was just thinking. What about the meaning of life? No, death. Well, what do you want? Toast or cereal? Toast, and I'll fix it. You were hired to be a governess in this house, not a cook. What do you mean, death? Have you seen your uncle this morning? No. I haven't seen Uncle Roger since the accident. It wasn't an accident. Vicky, I don't believe that. But it's true. Someone tried to kill him. That's just what my mother said last night. I suppose next thing you'll tell me it was Burke. I didn't say that. All I know is that it happened, and it might happen again. A bleeder valve? What's a bleeder valve? Well, I'd never heard of one myself until last night. It's got something to do with the brakes. And you say someone removed this valve thing from Uncle Roger's car while it was still in the garage? That's right. Whoever did it wanted the brakes to fail partway down the hill, and that's just what happened. It's just so hard to believe. Well, it's a fact, Carolyn. You have to face that. Someone tried to kill your uncle, and he may try again. What I mean is, couldn't this thing have, have, have fallen off the car, you know, instead of someone taking it off? You're still thinking about Burke Devlin, aren't you? I didn't say that. Carolyn, last night I told your uncle I went into the garage. I saw Burke Devlin there with a wrench in his hand. That's right. Now, I didn't see him remove any valve or anything like that. But he was there, and it was right after he asked your uncle to drive into town to meet him. Then my mother was right. Oh, Vicky, how big a fool can I be arguing with my mother over a man who could... I guess I'm just a lousy judge of character, that's all. Maybe. How can you say maybe? Because I'm not sure myself. Carolyn, I've been up half the night thinking about Devlin and... Do you know what he said to me? He told me to go home, go back to New York while I still could get out of this mess. You saw Burke last night? Yes. After I told your uncle about seeing him in the garage, we went to his hotel room. Carolyn, all I wanted to do was to, to come up here and... and do a job and maybe find out something. What about Burke? What happened? Well, your uncle accused him of trying to kill him. And he denied it. He said he hadn't touched the car. But how could he deny it? You saw him with the wrench. Well, he said he found that on the front seat of the car. But did Uncle Roger believe him? No. But that's why I stayed up half the night. You see, I did. Oh, Vicky, I hope you're right. David, is that you? Oh, Carolyn, did you see David when you came in? If I had, I'd have crossed to the other side of the road. Where's my mother? She's somewhere in the house looking for him. You people don't know when you're well off. If that monster's gone into hiding, you should be celebrating, not hunting for him. Carolyn, this is serious. Oh, come on. He's only one nine-year-old boy. The world is full of them. How many of them try to commit murder? You weren't serious about that, were you? I just want to know if you saw David or not. No, I didn't. Now tell me what you meant about murder. Well, maybe that was too strong a word. The main thing is that David has disappeared and we've got to find him. Well, have you looked in the basement? He's gone down there a few times. I think that's where your mother is right now. Just what did he do? It might be better if she told you. Well, did he try to set the house on fire or push someone downstairs? Or... Oh, come on, Vicky. I've just come from a guessing game. Don't what make do me keep mean? it. Burke Devlin. I was in his hotel room this afternoon. <laughs> Don't get worried. I had a chaperone. The sheriff was there, too. 
Well, I don't think he'll be bothering Mr. Devlin anymore. Don't count on that. With everyone around here but you and me thinking Burke tried to kill... Is that what you were talking about? David? Yes. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, it's true. I think I'd better check Vicky, out... Vicki, wait a minute. You... You're talking about a kid tampering with the brakes on his own father's car. I know. But David... Vicki, he's only nine years old. I know that, too. He must have snuck into the garage and found the wrench and taken the valve from your uncle's car. And then he put the wrench on the front seat, which is where Burke Devlin said he found it. But are you sure? I mean, how could you know? Because for some reason, which I'll never understand, David didn't throw the valve away. I found it in his dresser drawer less than an hour ago. Carolyn, I know it's a horrible thing. What about book. the valve? Where is it? I don't know. But I thought you said you just found it. I locked it up in my dresser drawer, and when I brought your mother upstairs to show it to her, it was gone. And so was David. Oh, we sure do breed them in this family, don't we? My mother hasn't left the place in 18 years. My little cousin tries to kill his own father. These walls shouldn't be paneled, Vicky. They should be padded. Well, maybe he didn't realize how serious it could be. I wonder what they think of the last in the family line, the Collins tradition. Carolyn. You know, what gets me is the way I've been tearing myself apart, feeling responsible for what happened. But that's ridiculous. It wasn't your fault. I keep remembering I was the one who brought Burke up here. If he tampered with those brakes, I gave him the chance to do it. That part is over now. The only person we have to worry about is David. Will you help me look for him? The thing I'd like to know is how David got the valve out of my dresser drawer. I thought he forced it open. No, it was still locked when I got back there. The key. It was in my pocket. Well, I'm afraid there's only one answer, Vicky. Ghosts. Carolyn, I'm not joking. Neither am I. Listen, we have spooks in all sizes and shapes in this mausoleum. And if you haven't seen them yet, just stick around. They'll be here. I'm only half kidding. Seriously, there is another way David could have gotten that drawer open. How? Wait here a minute. I want to get something from my room. Carolyn, come back, wait. Did you just hear something? No. Where? Back there, behind that door. Oh, that's not possible. That part of the house is closed off. I thought I heard something fall. You sure? Of course I'm sure. But no one ever goes back there. But no I one. I just heard something. And it's not the first time. Vicki, are you trying to scare me with my own ghosts? It's true. The other day when I was here, the door was open. And I went to it to see who it was, and it closed by itself. And when I tried it, it was locked. Well, of course it was. It's always locked. Is it? Who is it? Who's there? Oh, mother. What's the matter with you two? Well, I mean... Well, Vicky we heard a noise and... and the door opened just a little bit. We wondered who it was. I dropped my keys. I had to stop and pick them up. Did you find David? No. Well, he's not in there. Miss Winters, let's go in your room. I'd like to talk to you. Carolyn was right. That wing of the house is always closed off, but I thought David might have found some way of getting in. 
But what about the time when I saw the door open? Well, the caretaker sometimes checks it. He probably forgot to sh sh shut it tightly. Well, it closed. Then when I tried it, it wouldn't open. Well, it has a spring lock on the inside. As for its closing, it was probably the wind. Wind in that hallway? Miss Winters, I don't think we should spend our time discussing the, the reasons why a door might open or close. I'm much more concerned about David. Are you absolutely certain that object you found in his room was the valve to my brother's car? Well, it looked like it. Couldn't it have been something he picked up and saved, the way boys save rocks? Well, if it wasn't the valve, then why was he so anxious to get it back? Are you sure he did get it back? Well, I locked it in the drawer and, and then it was missing. Mrs. Stoddard, I don't understand. I simply want to be absolutely certain. It's a horrible accusation. I want to be sure. Well, so do I. But what else can we think? Are you sure you did put it in that drawer? Yes. Sherlock Holmes to the rescue. Watch this. Well, then that's... Where did that key come from? That dresser is a mate to the one in Carolyn, Carolyn's room. The keys are all the same. Well, then David could have taken her key and opened my drawer with it. I know how David could open the drawer, Miss Winters. I want to be certain he had a reason to. But I've told hey, you. Hey, when did you get interested in mechanics? What? I know you were a versatile gal, but I never... What is it, Carolyn? Mickey, where did you get this? Why? Well... There just happens to be a very well-thumbed page on the mechanics of assembling and disassembling a master brake cylinder. Let me see that. Well, then that's it. This is how David learned to take the valve out of the car. It's in your room, Miss Winters. I know. He, he was so determined to give it to me. He said it was a present. It's a strange gift, wouldn't you say? Want some company? Oh, hi, Carolyn. Spoken from the bottom of the pit. There is nothing I like better than a nice, cheery greeting. Oh, hi, Carolyn. That's the way I feel. Oh, look, the little boy will come back, all will be forgiven, and life will go on. You can take my word for it. Don't count on it. Oh, are you in a mood? Looks like we're in for a storm. I wish I'd never found that valve. Well, if you're worried about David, don't. With his thunder, he'll come chasing home. We haven't had a real storm since you've been here, have we? No. Well, prepare yourself for an education. You think this place is spooky now? Wait till the power fails. Collinwood by candlelight. There's all the ghosts waiting to pounce. Carolyn, what did you want? You mean you wish I'd shut up and get out of here? It's just that I'm a little bit tired. Okay. Oh, Vicky, don't blame yourself for David. He was a problem long before any of us ever heard of you. All right. Well, look at it this way. If you hadn't found that valve, Burke Devlin would still be on the hook. My Uncle Roger and my mother would still be trying to get him put away for something he had nothing to do with. I know all that. Well, then what's eating you? It doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter, Vicky. It matters very much. I thought we were friends, you and I. Tell me, what's tearing you apart? Your mother. Is he? Nope. Just reading my birth certificate. Come on in. Remember it by heart. Her name is Victoria. I can't take care of her. Right? It doesn't change. I wonder if the person who wrote that ever knew you'd end up here. We'll be having dinner in about half an hour. Is that what you came up here to tell me? 
No. I was just wondering how you survived all the excitement. David? You know my mother insists on his staying here. She told me. Vicky, what do you think of us? I mean, well, you've been here a while. You've had a chance to see us in action. Are we crazy, all of us? Of course not. Well, now think about it. There's my mother. She hasn't been off the grounds in 18 years, ever since my father deserted her. Uncle Roger, running around like a madman, thinking Berg Devlin wants to kill him. David. And me. And what's your brand of insanity? I'm not joking. I don't know what we are anymore, Vicky. I don't even see how you can continue to stay on here. I have to. Why, because of that note? You haven't found out one more thing about yourself since you came up here. I know. Oh, I'm not suggesting you leave. Believe me, I'd hate it if you did. Vicky, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with all of us? Has your mother been talking to you about marriage again? Yes. Vicky, you want to find out who you are. Well, so do I. But I don't know how to go about it. Well, I haven't been doing a very good job myself. Oh, but you try. At least you try. Not hard enough. Carolyn, could I borrow your car tonight? Sure. Thanks, there's something I have to do in town. Okay. Well, I guess I might as well get ready for supper. Carolyn, I wish I could help you. So do I. The thing that gets me is this. My mother wants me to marry Joe Haskell. But I can't help but think that the worst thing I could do to a nice guy like that would be to bring him into this nutty family. How about it, Mrs. Stoddard? Do I get to see Carolyn? Or did you lock her back up in this dungeon of yours? If you can still drive, I suggest that you leave. With all due respect, ma'am, I've been listening to suggestions for too many years. Where is she, Miss Winter? Is she upstairs? You're being very foolish. Oh, no, I'm, I'm being smart. What I was was foolish, not saying anything. That, that was foolish. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Oh, Hammett won't come to the mountain? Joe, you stay right here. I'm sorry, Mr. Stoddard. What's going on down Joe, what are you doing here? I'm paying a visit to my girl. That's what I'm doing. You potted. Your mother was more ladylike. She said I was drunk. Well, let's go into the council room. You too, Miss Winters. Everybody. I don't know what you're trying to sit prove. down. I think you're the one that ought to sit down. Oh, you're funny. Do you know that? You're a very funny girl. You're also a very sad girl. What do you want? I want you to know what you did to her. That's what I want. Me? Joe, now you listen no, to you me. No, you listen to me. Carolyn, you know when you're going to get married? Never. Now, it isn't me. It isn't anybody. It's you. Old spinster you, sitting in your dungeon, keeping your mother company. I insist that you leave. I will, I will. But not till I've said what I came to say. Mrs. Stoddard, I think I ought to go. Oh, no, Miss Winters. You stay. You, you hear this. You want to live in this house, you ought to hear what it does to you. Do you know why she doesn't want to marry me? Because she's scared. She's scared to marry anybody. That's not true. Oh, yes, it is, Carolyn. You laugh and you make jokes and you run around like crazy. But inside, you're shaking like a rabbit. And you know why? Because of her. That's enough. Mrs. Stoddard, I haven't finished. Carolyn, look at your mother. She's been sitting in this house for 18 years. She's never even gone off this hill since the day your father walked out on That her. is no concern of yours. Oh, yes, it is. Mrs. Stoddard, I... I love your daughter. And I want to get married. But she won't because she... She sees what it did to you. It put you in a prison. 
this big rotten prison. Joe! Um, all right. All right. You did it to her, Mrs. Stoddard. You did it to her. I think you ought to sit down. No. Maybe just, just for a minute. It's a prison, Miss, Miss Winters. You stay here, you, you'll be as nuts as the rest of them. You just sit quietly. The only trouble is, see, uh, I'm stuck. I love her. And I'm stuck. He's out cold. Mother, what he said, it isn't true. Vicky, whatever got into him? He loves you. I think I better go into town now. It isn't true, Joe. None of what you said is true. You're home early. Hi, Carolyn. I hope everything turned down as well as you expected. More or less. What's wrong? Not a thing. May I have the keys to my car, please? Of course. And thank you very much. Is there anything left over from dinner? I'm starved. Why? Didn't Burke feed you well? I think you'll find something in the kitchen. Angry because I met Burke Devlin. I thought you said you were hungry. That can wait. I want to know what's troubling you. Vicki, you don't have to give me any explanations. You have a perfect right to see or meet or have dinner with anyone you please. I don't think you really mean that. You think I'm jealous of you, don't you? You hardly know him. You, you've only met Burke once or twice. And I'd always thought of you as Joe. Vicki, let me make it very clear. I'm not jealous. Not jealous at all. I was surprised. Nothing more. Surprised at what? Well, after all, you've spent so much time telling me I shouldn't trust Burke, that I shouldn't believe what he tells me, even hinting that I should never see him again. And then the next thing I know, you're in his hotel room having dinner and... Carolyn, you idiot. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was Joe, wasn't it? He was the one who told you. Maybe. Well, I can assure you it was all very innocent. Vicky, I told you, you don't owe me any explanations. But I want you to know. Burke said that he might be able to help me try and find something about my past. I see. And that's all there was to it. And what about your future, Vicky? Didn't you and Burke make some plans for that, too? Now, just a minute. I'd better go and see what's in the kitchen. Sorry. You were right. I was an idiot. I guess we were all under pretty much pressure. But that doesn't excuse... 
What I mean is you were right about something else, too. I was jealous of you. Well, there is no reason to be. I know that. Vicki Burke doesn't mean anything to me. It's... I don't know. I just have to grab everything, Vicki. Everything. That's a good way to end up with nothing. An old maid. That's what Joe said I'd be. An old maid sitting in this house with my mother. Vicki, remember when I told you that all the rest of us must be crazy? I guess you better add me to that list now, too. I will if you don't stop feeling so sorry for yourself. But why do I act that way? What makes me go into an uproar because you see a man I hardly even know? Vicki, don't you see? How can you ever know when it's going to happen again? Well, the next time I see Burke Devlin, I'll come back here ready for a fight. I don't see how you can joke about it. Come on, it's not all that serious. It is, as long as you live here. Uncle Roger barely tolerates you. And David, well, he's full of nothing but threats against you. Vicki, it's not going to be any fun for you here. And if I start turning against you, for no reason at all, as I just did, there won't be anyone. You'll be alone. And you'll leave. And I don't want that, Vicky. I truly, truly don't want that. I'm not going to leave. And nothing's going to happen to me. I hope you're right. 